It is today's talk with Marty G, and I am Marty G. Hello again. Glad to have you with me. It is Wednesday, third day of the month, which I know third day of the month, third day of the week. I don't even know what day it is. But it is today's talk, and I have another friend of mine. I have Stephanie Coates. Hello, Stephanie. How are you? Hi, I'm well. How about you? I'm good. And folks, I'm going to make a confession. This is a redo. I'm doing Stephanie over again because, uh, yeah, as much as I like to brag about my technical prowess, user error really messed up her interview with me. It was terrible. It was terrible. She did great. She did perfectly. She was awesome. She was fantastic. I went back to look at it, and I was really bad. My microphone was really stupid. I had the camera set up wrong. Stephanie looked great. Steph, you did great. You were awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully I can do great again today. We'll you, you set the bar pretty high for yourself. So, <laughs> And what? You're like 6'2", so you should be able to get that, so that just easy. Yeah, exactly. So thanks again for being on with me. I really appreciate it. So what I want to know is who are you and what do you do? Because we see each other, If because you guys don't know a lot about me and stuff. We see each other once a month. We have a once a month rendezvous with about 30 other people through Leadership Eugene Springfield. That's where I met her. So why don't you tell us all what you do? Okay, well, um, I am a local real estate broker here in um, Eugene, and I've been a broker for now for 16 years. And so that's that's what I do for work. Broker, okay. So I know I, I got into this, and this is where I always want to make sure I understand as fully as humanly possible because Real estate broker, real estate agent, real estate. There's so many different real estate components that go in sure. there. Yeah. What's the difference between a real estate broker and real estate agent? Okay. Wonderful question. So um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background on, okay. on that. So, okay, so years and years ago, and I believe, you know, I got licensed in 2006, and I think it was shortly before that, like around year 2000 is when um, – the actual um, names and designations changed. So it used to be that you'd become licensed and you first would become a real estate agent, like a salesperson, an agent, and then you'd have to work under the supervision of a broker who historically probably was the one that like either owned the company or if they didn't, they were like the supervisor um, for all of the agents in that office. Um, they then, as I understand it, changed the... Um, the licensure terms. And so now when you become licensed, you automatically become a broker. And then the designation above that is a principal broker. And so to, so the broker is basically kind of your entry level. You just passed the test. Here you are, you're, you are now a real estate broker, um, a principal broker. Technically you have to have at least three years of experience. Um, and then you also have another um, state and national exam that you have to pass in order to do that. And that basically gives you the opportunity um, to supervise other brokers um, or own your own um, firm. So I technically am a principal broker, um, and that's what it says on my business card. But when I talk to people just in normal day to day, I usually just use the term broker because principal broker would be confusing, and then we'd have this conversation every time. So right, you'd um, be like, yeah. just like you did with me, like okay, <laughs> exactly. now, can we yeah. get to the deal already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I don't care what you are. So um, so anyway, so yeah, so there's broker, principal broker. And so if you see somebody that has a principal broker on their card, basically it just means that they have at least three years of experience and they have gone through um, the additional um, coursework and then taken another exam in order to um, become that. And then, you know, the other terms, the one other term I'll just, just go over too. Um, Please I think throw it at me. Thing to um, the general public is realtor. So basically... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how come there's not a faker? There's a realtor yeah. who's not a faker. I know, right? Yeah. So a realtor essentially is anybody that is a broker, that's a principal broker, anybody that's licensed to sell real estate. That would be a realtor. Now, what technically makes you a realtor is that you are a member of the National Association of Realtors. And so when you when you become licensed, you are actually required to join um, the National Association of Realtors, which then puts you into your state association, um, and then you will have a local affiliation as well. So like I'm a member of the Eugene Association of Realtors, okay, Oregon Association, wow, and the National Association. So anyway, 
So I'm just curious yeah. when I think back to um, was I was actually involved loosely outside of the whole real estate market thing back before the economy crash, right? I used I was working with a lot of investors, and people doing um, deals left and right, and all this. They were doing all kinds of alternative financing, buying, selling, flipping, doing all that stuff. Did a lot of the regulations and title stuff change when everything blew up? Did it, um, really it change a lot? It did. Yeah, yeah, it really did. Um, so we had a whole bunch of um, new rules and legislation and stuff that was put into place um, after that that was kind of helping to safeguard the consumer. So I think a lot of um, what was going on at that time were, you know, people were maybe giving loans when um, they weren't necessarily scrutinizing um, the borrower um, very well. So a lot of these people were getting loans that maybe um, didn't maybe qualify. Um, and they also weren't really doing a lot of underwriting um, to you know, verify um, that these people were in fact qualified or, or weren't. Um, so now that they, they are um, much, much better at you know, making verifications of people's income assets, um, that kind of thing. Um, and then the other thing that, that, that changed and probably one of the biggest things was how we do appraisals. So it used to be, um, you know, the lenders were a little bit kind of in bed with the appraisers, right? And right, so right. they need an appraisal, they're having golf, they say, hey, bud, can we get this appraisal to come in at this price? Here's right. Wink, wink, right? nudge, okay. nudge. So, exactly. And what do you know? Here comes the appraisal and it's exactly what we need. Yeah. Well, um, they put into um, place some um, kind of safeguards for that as well. So now we are actually not allowed to have any um, communication with the appraiser whatsoever. So um, there's a pool of appraisers and they um, work for, they're independent appraisers, but they're a part of an appraisal management um, service. Mm -hmm. So the lenders can contact the appraisal management company and then they dispatch out an appraiser. And so we, it's very blind. We have no idea who our appraiser even is until they show up at the door, right? So so a lot of that has put, been put into place too to make it a little bit um, more um, fair and above board. Okay, now I have to tell you because this, why I keyed on you initially when I first met you at LES, you were, actually I didn't tell you this first time we talked, but you remind me of a friend of mine when I was going through college many, many years ago. Her name was Angelique. And she was young like yourself, but we were both young at the time. Well, she was younger than me. And I called her a weather nerd because she totally geeked out on the weather. I mean, literally, she ate, drank, slept, everything about the weather. She even made the school, like, design this whole meteorological program for her so she could get her degree in actually being a weather forecaster. I don't know how she did it, but she did it that way. Yeah. And then, like, I ran into you, figured out what you did, and here you are, you're a broker, um, my my wife's brother-in-law is like one of the bigger brokers here in Eugene. A A.D. Smith. Oh yeah, okay, I didn't know. Right. That. Yeah, so A.D. and I actually started. Um, he and I started with him in about a month of each other at Keller Williams. Okay. And he's been one of my my good buds for for years. Right. So. And now he's a little a little yeah. older than you. So he is a little older than me. So yes. here's my thing. Yeah. Um, you're not so old. So I'm trying to I'm not that like, old. Help, help, <laughs> no. me under, help me understand this. Did, did you start doing real estate? Like you came out of your parent, out of your mama and then yeah. in the crib, they took away all your toys and then you know, like <laughs> put real estate books in there. And is, is that how that worked or what? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So but essentially when I was eight years old, I decided I wanted to be a real estate agent and um, I became one at 18. So okay. Uh, yeah. So when I, when I was about eight, um, you know, I, my, well, when I was younger than that, I would say that, you know, my dad used to buy, um, property and then he would, you know, subdivide and then he'd build a couple spec houses here and there. That wasn't his full time gig. Um, but at the ages of, you know, three, four, that kind of thing, I would go and I'd look at those and I think I'd see it was daddy's houses and I would kind of understand that. And, um, you know, that was fun and, and whatever. So there was, there was a little bit of exposure, I would say pretty early on to, um, real estate. Okay. Um, after that, when I was about eight years old, um, my family was looking for another um, home for, for, for us. And um, my, my mother looked for three years. And so I thank God every day that I was not her agent because she would have driven me absolutely up a tree <laughs> at that many flipping houses. So, um, but you know, what, what was impressionable to me at that time in my life was you know, we, of course, there was no internet then. So, um, it, you know, she would get the newspaper and she'd flip through it and she would see 
um, you know, what, what properties were going to have an open house for that weekend and, and such. Um, and then, you know, she <laughs> has an obsession with mocha lot of chills from Cinnabon. So uh -huh. we would drive out to Valley River, we would get the mocha lot of chill, and then we would, we would go around to the different open houses. And so at, you know, eight, nine years old, I looked at the realtors and I, you know, they're typically always attractive. They had nice cars, their hair was done and they had nails and, and they wore high heels. And I kind of thought, you know, I feel like I might be cut out for this. This, this, this is going to be here. And um, so, you know, that was, of course, at a really young age. And then after that, I started delving into what the industry actually entailed, aside from the pretty houses and, of course, pretty realtors. And I think what really impressed me the most um, at like the age of 11 was um, the idea of, of compound interest, really. And so it was just basically the, the idea that, you know, very ordinary people that maybe don't have um, a lot of income or education um, can invest in real estate. And over time, they can often amass a, a greater deal of wealth than maybe their counterparts that are maybe really highly educated or, or, or really well paid kind of thing. Um, and so that was really fascinating to me. And um, coming from a, a, a pretty big family, um, my grandmother had 16 kids. Holy so cow! 170 Catholic? cousins. Holy cow! And, yeah. And, <laughs> um, and just to put it in perspective, so of my 170 cousins, I'm about in the middle um, as far as age, and okay. I'm the fourth to ever have even graduated from high school. Wow. So I don't come from a family that's like super highly educated, yet a lot of my aunts and uncles and um, cousins and stuff, you know, took it upon themselves to put themselves in a position to buy real estate and then, you know, have over time, you know, certainly... Um, made money that way um, without, you know, high levels of education or, or even really um, an income to start with. So that was pretty impressive to me at that age. I started attending real estate seminars, reading real estate investment books. Um, I have a book report from The Millionaire Next Door from um, when I was um, in seventh grade at Kennedy Middle School, actually. And uh -huh. um, so, yeah, so it was really just kind of a something that was really important to me um, at a young age. And so I finished at Churchill High School, which A.D. Smith, of course, is also okay. an alum from there as well. A little bit different uh, time. I'll just say and, a little bit of a timeline uh, difference, I'm sure. A little timeline difference there, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the, the interesting thing is that mo most of my teachers were, they were not very supportive of my, my plans to go into real estate. Really? They, well, what did they want you to do? What, what were they trying to get well, you? Well, of course, they wanted me to go to college and, um, you know, kind of take that that route and, um, you know, go get a degree and then go get a job. And, and, and so the real estate thing or going to a trade school was not, it was certainly not promoted. And um, I remember actually having like a fight with my, my counselor about it, mm -hmm. you know, and saying, no, nope, I don't think this path is for me. This is what I'm going to do. And if I try it for two years and I'm 20, I can still go to college then, right? Are those teachers and still there by, by chance? <laughs> are, are they still there? Oh, probably not. I mean, oh, you know, it's been, about to say it's, been, it's been a little bit, but, um, but nonetheless, you know, the, and, and of course, I mean, you know, kind of some of the things that we talk about in our leadership program too, you know, the, how we train our kids these days, it's graduate from high school, go to college, take out a bunch of student loans, right. And then go get a job. And so from a really early age, like 21, 22, I, you know, was making pretty good money in real estate, actually had become pretty established and was doing well. And I would see my friends that had gone to college, taken that path, had a degree in psychology, but they're a teller at the bank. Right. right. And so you have this giant amount of student loans. <laughs> this is the worst ROI no I've ever Absolutely. seen, right? So, um, so yeah, I think it was a it was the right path for me. Um, I graduated early. I think I was a little nervous that my teachers might have been right about the college thing. So when I was still in high school, I was taking. Um, the real estate course out at Lane Community College and um, just at night just to kind of make sure it was really what I wanted to do before I bagged this whole college idea and um, it was and so um, I graduated early I went to a private real estate school in Salem and I was done by the time I was 17 but I had to be 18 to get that license so right. I had to wait a couple months and then started then so well I think it's cool because if you think about it you still wanted to do the the pretty dress up thing that girls yeah. do you just took the, the the most financially responsible way to do it. <laughs> if I want to yeah, play I mean, dress up yeah. and do all the things that girls do, I'm going to make sure I can pay for it. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you still wanted to do it. You just figured out how to pay for it. 
yeah yeah exactly and i and i have nothing against against college i think that's great if you have mm-hmm. something that you know you want you want to go for and you're going to require that education for just for me that wasn't my path and um and it's so far it's turned out okay so well i give you props for following your passion and a similar story for me man my first yeah. career choice was uh was uh, television and i remember um, when i was in college when i got out of the military i actually had a couple of instructors or college professors um, at CU Denver literally tell me that I would not have a future in television. Yeah, they just told are. me just to get out. And <laughs> I, I literally was happy to actually come back to Colorado with an Emmy to one of the instructors to show him my Emmy. I mean, I was really Good. happy to do that. I mean, I actually yeah. I had the picture of the Emmy. I said, well, looky, mm-hmm. here you go. Because I would have to buy my Emmy. If I would have my own, I had to buy it. Is really weird the way it works. They give you one for the station, then you have to buy your own. I'm like, oh, funny. Okay. I don't want to buy a statue. That's ridiculous. I'll just have it on my resume. It's good enough. So yeah. now, if I think about what you've been doing for the last bunch of years in this whole mindset of real estate, now you got a re- your website. I'm curious about something. Tell me, what does the DC stand for? I've been trying to rack my brain around this. <laughs> what does uh. the DC mean? <laughs> well, um, so I, I work for um, DC Fine Homes, DC Real Estate. And so DC is our founder, Dan Cooper. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. So, and basically, you just said all over the state of Oregon. So you're not like pretty much limited to anything, or is it just pretty much just the Lane County area or uh, Southern Oregon? Uh, well, I, I would say most of what I do, like 90% of what I do, is here in kind of our Lane County um, area, Eugene, Springfield, all kind of outlying um, neighborhoods and stuff. I'll, however, um, you know, I, I am licensed in the state of Oregon. So like right now I've got a listing in Newport. Um, the farthest I've sold one is in Elgin, which is about eight hours away on the Idaho border. Um, you know, I've gone down to Roseburg, Glide, just kind of, it, dep- it depends on what it is, right? Like if, right. If, if it makes sense for me to take it and I do feel like I'm the best you know, person to um, help that client, then I will happily travel um, to do it. But if I feel like it's maybe not the best, you know, place of my expertise, they could be better served by somebody else, then I'll, I'll refer it to somebody in that area. Tell me about your first deal. What was that like? Your very, very first one, do you remember? It was a nightmare. Really? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> um well so well first of all so this woman she was coming up from california and um she so my my boss at keller williams had um referred her to me and and because i was new and so they said okay you know um we've got this lady coming up and our california office has called us and um you know said that she we need to help her so anyway she initially had wanted like 10 acres in roseburg and so I um, went down, I mean, I really worked pretty hard on that. I, I went down there like a week ahead of time. I previewed all the properties, made sure I knew where they were. So I would be really good at showing the, the houses to her and, and trying to make sure that I, you know, was, was going to serve this client really well. Because um, I was 18, was my first deal here. Oh and just a little nervous, well, right? All your girlfriends um, are like at the mall or whatever, and you're yeah. out doing a piece of real estate. Yeah. <laughs> Like I, I remember my dad drove me down to Roseburg and um, we you know, just made sure that we knew how to how to get there, how to get everywhere. Um, anyway, she shows up and I go to take her on all these um, to tour these houses. And um, long story short, she hated Roseburg and it was kind of like kind of humorous. I mean, we in my industry we say buyers are liars, and yep, um, we say that it's true in every industry. <laughs> A lot of times what they initially tell you that they want after they go out and actually see that, yep. they think, nope, not at all what I want. And I think she she had some idea that we would have these beautiful country properties and these lovely estates on 10 acres and like these gated communities. Well, we don't really have that, certainly not in Roseburg. So um, anyway, we went from country property in Roseburg to she eventually bought a um, house in um, the North Gillum area, which <laughs> was not Close. on 10 acres at all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, but she was, um, there's a lot to handle. She was, wow. And she was probably, I think she was in her 80s um, as well. And she was a retired parole officer, is what she was. So she, oh, okay. <laughs> she was, uh, she had kind of an attitude. Right. Okay. It was, it was, she like, had an edge. Did she have like a nightstick with her too? Kind of 
Right she had a, she had a like a walking yeah she 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 marched really she didn't walk she marched <laughs> <laughs> she did so. awesome but it was a, it was a great first experience to kind of cut my teeth on so thank you fabulous well you know I could talk to you all day and I just always want to make I mean you you're, you've been a joy to get to know you know like I say you're, you're one of my favorite people you just got you got Moxie you got that <laughs> Moxie girl all right. All so right. tell me um. I don't have like a whole bunch of friends, but I got a few. Like I said, I've got a, a Facebook group of professionals, like 200 and some odd people, and they tend to watch these when I load them from time to time and on LinkedIn as well. But how can I help you? How can we help you? And you know, I, I always try to figure a best way to do that. How best can we help you? What, what, what can we do to, to help the, the Stephanie Koch team? What, what can we do? Uh, well, you know, I mean, certainly what we do is we, you know, help people buy, sell and invest in real estate. So, I mean, if there is anybody that, um, you know, is looking to do any of those things, so certainly send them our way. Um, you know, and then the other thing too, I think, I think this market, oftentimes it's provided a lot of, um, just questions, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's been a kind of a wild couple of years, um, in real estate and, um, there's no real signs of that slowing down. So, you know, even if people just have questions about, okay, what's my house worth right now? Uh, you know, what, what should I do? Right. What should I do with this equity that I have? You know, should I, should I invest elsewhere? What, you know, then we're certainly happy to have, you know, conversations and help people kind of get some questions answered. Um, you know, and other than that, you know, oftentimes there's people that want to get into real estate too. So, you know, if, if anybody knows anybody that's looking to, um, talk about a career then you know i'm always happy to help talk I about you, the i've always the thought about it. everybody's mm -hmm. always told me i should do it from like the minute i learned how to start talking but i just i hate paperwork i hate it mm -hmm. hate it hate it it's like it's yeah. like and that's like all real estate it's all i mean even though it's all digitized now it's still a lot of paperwork i can't yeah. deal with it can't do it it's not for me but i will make sure that we we do that send people your direction uh for questions folks reach out stephanie's great um i'll get your contact i mean i've got all the information here what's best uh website uh, linkedin what's the best way to get a hold of you anyway whatever anyway just reach her she's reachable sure. Sure. reach out and touch her <laughs> well don't well, you know, don't touch her the wrong it's don't let's not get hashtaggy here folks all right <laughs> this is a family show there we go Anything you want to share before we go? No, I mean, I think, thank you so much for the opportunity and to, to be, be featured here. I appreciate it. You bet. Thanks for doing it again. I appreciate yep. it. Thanks for doing sure. it twice. Yeah. Now, now, normally this is where I would say, hey, I got a gotcha for you, but you already know the gotcha because I got you last time. So I'm going <laughs> to yeah. you again this time. So it's mm -hmm. time for let's get real. Hey. 3,000 questions. I got 3,000 more. Okay. I prepared this time for you. But three questions for our lovely contestant, Stephanie Coates. Question number one. Who would you rather hang out with for a day and why? Superman or Batman? Oh, boy. Um, you know, I'm going to say Superman. Why? Uh, well, I think that he more, like, goes in and, like, saves people. I, think. I would have to say Superman, too, because he never really talked. He doesn't talk a whole lot. He's not a, he's not sure. a big talker. Right. He's a big mm -hmm. shower, gets things done. Right, right. I would just get tired of Batman's voice. I'm Batman. He's a, he's I know a little, little, little noir, you know? Yeah. I think Superman's a little bit happier kind of a guy. Um, a little too dark. He's, he's into saving people you know yeah. the only thing i've always wondered about superman is it's like when he goes in to save people he's always got to come like through the wall like yeah. why can't he, he close breaks the door stuff. you know yeah. i mean my gosh guy break it yeah. like dude yeah right mm -hmm. yeah. could you there's a lot of damp you know yeah i appreciate you saving me but you <laughs> you broke stuff could you just fly up to the window and then just open oh. it and go in oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's you know my only thing with with him, but I, I think we, we would talk about that probably on our our day together. While you're out, yeah, yeah let's let's yeah. talk about your sure. breakage, Superman. Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, question number two: If you were ever, if you ever decided to run for president, what would be your campaign slogan? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
for my campaign slogan. Your campaign slogan. Oh, oh boy. Hmm. I'll tell you what mine is while you think. Here's mine. Okay. I, I, okay. I've thought about this many, many times. If I was to run for president, I would say bring back the afternoon nap okay. and mandatory skipping twice a day for every adult. Okay. Because look, I think if everybody took a nap in the middle of the day, we'd be much mm -hmm. happier people. Mm hmm Sure. And adults can't be jerks when they're skipping. Have you ever seen anybody yeah. mad when they're skipping? No. I've never. You've never seen anybody with like anger and angst when they're skipping. They're goofy as hell. <laughs> so if everybody had to skip twice a day, I think there'd right. be less angst, okay. less stress, less drama. Take a nap and skip. We're good to go. That's my. That's my. That's my uh, okay. slogan. Okay. I, I like it. it. I like it. Yeah. Nothing? You got nothing? <laughs> you gotta have slogan. something. Come slogan. on. Oh, nothing? God. Okay. I don't know. All right, I'll, I'll let you off the hook because you, I'll let you off the hook because this is, this is recording number two. So this, I'll let yeah, you off the hook. Okay. okay, all right. But I'm going to ask you another question. Okay, okay. Um, what is the best thing about your life? Oh, my. Um, I would just have to say the people in it. Okay. Tell me more. Yeah. Why? Uh, well, you know, I mean, I think, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's who we're here for, right? Like, that's who we're here to make a difference for, whether it's, you know, I've had the last couple of years, I've had a lot of things in my family where I've kind of had to step in and, and take care of a lot of people. And, um, you know, family's everything. So I would say the people in it. I'm going to have to agree with you wholeheartedly because I think about that quite frequently just in my situation in my life not so close to family but you know i've been in lane county for almost 15 years and mm -hmm. the last two and a half to three years have been better than the first like 12. Yeah. okay <laughs> i've met some really cool people over the course of yeah. the last few years and yeah. they've been but like family to me so i have to agree at the mm -hmm. end of the day it is the people so i agree with you so anyway, um, thanks again for being on, folks. Reach out for Stephanie Coates. Check out her, her website. I'll have all her information in the in the notes down below. And um, definitely, I appreciate you being on. If there's anything I can do for you, I'll probably see you at, in class. So we'll reach out. We got each other's numbers. But again, thanks for being on. I really appreciate it. I'll see you later. Okay, bye. No, I'm dead, right? Leave her early, but I'm her night. Long and short, they keep their head right. Teed up out in Malibu, got sand all in my good shoes. Press a with the pessimism, but I only came for the good news. I am the show that they came for. Hitting the target I aim for. We've been discussing the contract. Just tell them they get what they pay for. I am not with poverty. Really, it started to bother me. I need the yacht with the property. They come with the view that you gotta see. Came up from the basement, hit the rooftop with a passion. Bad with some good credit. In a good sense for the fashion Dope blowing with the left hand Gripping with the right hand Over share to the airport I'ma hit you back with my flight Bill, land I'm in the mood for a switch up yes, I hit the function, hit the rose right till I hiccup I hit the stage and leave with money that say stick up She picture perfect so I told him I'ma flick up